So uh, Sunday I'm going to start a new series. And uh, it's going to be good. No, I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> I want you to concentrate on tonight. But it's going to be good. Thank you, Jesus. So the title of the message tonight is Let There Be Light. And uh, let's just go directly to Genesis chapter 1 because uh, we know the scripture, we should know the scripture by now that, that we're standing on with this, uh, with this series of messages. You know, Jesus said, you search the scriptures because... In them you think you have eternal life, but they speak of me. So uh, let's pray and we'll get right into it. Father God, we thank you so much for your word. Thank you, Lord, that you bring light and life to us so that we can take your light and take your life and give it to the world. So, Lord, we just ask that you speak to our hearts and our minds tonight so that we can walk in what you have for us so that we can be the light, so that we can give the life that people need in Jesus' name. And all who agree, say amen. amen. So, in, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. So God said, let there be light. Light removes darkness. It just makes it disappear. You know, when you turn on, the, if you turn on the light, if there's enough light, there is no shadow. If there's enough light, you know, they've, there's scientists have built these rooms where they have these really, really high intensity lights. And, and even though there may be things in the room, there is no shadow because the light is so bright, it just envelops everything. So uh, light removes darkness. So before, and there was light before there was the sun, the moon, the stars. Amen. God began, uh, so when God began everything, he began with the earth, and then he started building everything else around in the universe. The earth is the center. I know there's, there's people that try to argue against that, but, you know, if you're building something, you start in the middle. Amen. And so the earth is the center. So what was the source of the light? He was the source of the light. So the Bible says of God that in him is light and there is no darkness at all. So he was the source of the light. And when we share Jesus, we share the source of light. Because people are walking around in darkness and without that light, they're stumbling around, as scripture says. So uh, there's things that we want to be. We, first of all, we want to be light. Amen. We want to be light. That doesn't mean show light, that means you are. That's not the same thing. Amen. We have the light in us, so we are light. Amen. So let's look at John chapter 8. So we want to, first of all, we want to be light. Say, I'm light. I'm light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John chapter 8, verse 12, and this is where Jesus was speaking to the woman at the well, and we're going to back up and look at this in a moment here, but I, I just really felt like we should start it with how he finished with her. He then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world, and not the woman at the well, the woman they threw down in front of Jesus, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am the light of the world, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. That means we should not allow darkness. 
If you fall on Jesus, you don't allow darkness. See, what, what happens a lot of times, people read scripture and they think, well, this just happens. Nothing happens unless you're in faith. Nothing in the word happens unless you're in faith. So we, so we dispel darkness by faith, okay? He that walketh in me, shall, he that followeth with me, followeth me, shall walk, not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So we dispel darkness around us. But the only way you do that is by faith, by believing that this is what Jesus has done with you, and wherever you go, darkness must flee. Now, it'll try to invade, all right, but we don't let it. Amen. So, but this is what people do, because, you know, we're always, we're always in the process of getting our minds renewed. Is that right? But because we haven't got everything taken care of yet, we, we sometimes will slip into the old things. That we're not supposed to be, we're not the thoughts and the processes that are not supposed to be working in us anymore. And it's because we haven't renewed our mind in that particular area. So, you know, one of the things that you hear Christians do all the time is they'll curse the darkness. In other words, what does it mean to curse the darkness? That doesn't mean... To start cussing, that means you start complaining about the darkness. People will complain, you know, they'll complain about all kinds of stuff. And instead of cursing the darkness, we are supposed to be dispelling the darkness. We're supposed to be showing the light. Amen? So, we're not supposed to curse darkness, we're supposed to bring light. Say, I bring light. So, when we're bringing light to people, because, you know, you don't bring light to everything in the whole world, you bring light to people, is that right? Okay, so when we're bringing light to people, a lot of times, probably most of the time, people know they're in the dark concerning Jesus. So I'm talking about people that don't know him. They know they're in the dark concerning Jesus. We need to show them the way out of the darkness. It doesn't really do any any good to tell people what a lousy sinner they are. They're kind of aware of that. And they don't necessarily have the opinion that it's lousy. <laughs> okay? But they know it doesn't line up with godly things. They know that much. So let's back up to verse 1 of chapter 8. It says, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. If you want people to know something, teach them. Don't rail. Amen. Teach them. He sat down and taught them, and the scribes and the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in, in adultery in the very act. So that means they walked right in the room while something was going on. That took some nerve. Now Moses in the law commanded us. Now this, you all know this is a setup, right? They knew about this lady. They knew what was going to go on. They went in there and they grabbed her. And they brought her out just so that they, they were ruining this woman's life just to get to Jesus. Now, we should not be surprised at what people will do to other people just to get you messed up. Right. Okay, right now we have a president that all these people are running around trying to, and they're messing up all kinds of people's lives to try to get to him. Okay? Now, Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what do you say? People are always going to Christian are always going to question your walk of faith. You know, I, I, I like the the meme I saw recently. You know, people think you're crazy when you're building an ark until it starts to rain. Right. <laughs> okay, this they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. You don't pay attention to darkness. You get, you get start tangling with that, and you get dirty. 
and you'll get dark yourself. Okay? So he stooped down and rolled on the ground as though he heard them not. And when they continued asking him, he lifted himself up and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Now we all know the only guy that can do this is Jesus himself. He's the only one without sin. But what he said, he didn't say without sin. He said without this sin. This is one of those places where the Greek to the English didn't translate very well. If you're without this sin, go ahead and pick up a rock. Now surely you'd think in a group of preachers, somebody could pick up a rock, right? <laughs> Wouldn't you think? <laughs> In a group of preachers, wouldn't you think that somebody could pick up a rock? Well, no. Nobody picking up any rock. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they that heard it, being convicted by their own conscience. So they're all guilty. By their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and a woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted himself up and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. And he said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So we lead people out of sin. And then we remind them, don't go back. Okay? So, there's four things I want you to see in here. First of all, light doesn't look for sin. Remember when they come up to you and they say, what do you say about all this? Light, light does not look for sin. It shows the way out. Amen. One of the reasons why people are scared to show up Scared to go, you know, in America, people know about church. But one of the reasons why they're afraid to go is they're afraid you're going to point out their sin. Light does not point out sin. It shows the way out of sin. Now, we're going to talk about it sooner or later. About the, what sin is and what it does and the effect it has. But we don't say you. Amen. And when you're talking to someone about Jesus, it doesn't make much sense to tell them what, what a louse you think they are, maybe. <laughs> right? You're trying to share the love of the Lord. God, God so loved the world. We, we, after a while, we tend to gain this idea that he loves the church, not so much the world. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says he loves the world. Amen. Now, obviously, he loves us, too. Okay? We are redeemed, but he loves the world also. So we show him the way out. Second thing I want you to learn out of this deal here is light is not tested by sin. Tested, that means tempted. That doesn't mean tempted like, oh, you might fall for it. That means you're not going to respond and react because somebody thinks you're wrong. Amen. You, you see people fussing all the time. Mm -mm. Light is not tested by sin. It shows the way out of sin. You know, I told you all that recently I had this conversation with a young man. I've been trying to lead him back to the Lord or to the Lord. One or the other. I don't know if he ever got saved. He says he hasn't been, but I don't know that. Sometimes, you know, people get their lives to the Lord early in life. And then, you know, life gets a hold of them and they don't remember all that. But, but I don't talk to him about, you know, I don't battle with him. I don't, you know, tell him he's wrong and things like that. I try to find a way to talk with him. And he's very antagonistic towards the church. I mean, he says some terrible things sometimes to other guys that choose to fight with him instead of trying to lead him. They're not trying to show him light. They're just trying to fight. You do that, you stepped over in the darkness yourself. Light shows the way out. Third thing, light exposes sin. Light exposes sin. Now, when, Je when they take this lady and they throw her down, and Jesus said, okay, if you don't have this sin, you can throw a rock. So light exposed the sin, didn't it? Yeah. Not with her, 
with the rest of them knuckleheads. Okay? And, and they're, they're, the one reason why the world has such, such animosity towards the church is, as we, as we try to point at the world, and they say, well, what about you? What are you doing? Amen. And, and if we've had problems, we need to be transparent with them and say, yeah, I've struggled with things, and, and maybe even have to tell them what it was sometimes, so that they can see that there is a way out of sin. God can deliver you from that because he delivered me. Amen. One of the things that I kind of miss was, you know, back in, the, back in the late 70s and early 80s, there were all these people getting saved out of drug addiction, you know, and out of, and, and, and out of neighborhoods and stuff. And there was this huge transition that was going on with folks. And you'd hear these testimonies. I mean, some of them would curl your, curl your blood, man. They're like, woo wee it was unbelievable what some people did. And, he's, and he's, these people were so happy to be saved. They get up and tell you something like, you know, I killed somebody one time. You're like, ooh, <laughs> I don't know if I want to hear this. But, but they were talking about how God had set them free, how God had delivered them. You know, we think it's a big deal to get delivered from donuts nowadays. Mm -hmm. Well... Light exposes sin and it shows the way out. Now, every one of these guys could have said to Jesus, what should we do? Instead, they just snuck off. Amen. Fourth thing I want you to see in this, light doesn't condemn. Jesus stood up and said, where's your accusers? Who accuses you? She said, no man, Lord. Light does not condemn. It shows the way out because Jesus always gives grace always gives grace. And if we are little Christ, which is what a Christian is, then we ought to always give grace. Amen. And let me say this too, whether they're saved or not, they need grace. Sometimes we say, well, they're saved, they ought to know better. Well, I agree, they ought to know better, but they ain't doing it. So let's show, them some, let's show them some grace so they can get past it. Amen. Jesus always gives grace. Now go back to John chapter 1, please. So first of all, we want to be light. Amen. Be light. Don't look for sin. Don't be tested by sin. Don't expose, uh, I mean, expose sin. And don't condemn. Amen. John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things that were made by Him, excuse me, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth into darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Another translation said that the darkness apprehended it not, or didn't take hold of it. You can't take a hold of something if you don't understand it. So we are called to help people comprehend the light. When you start talking to somebody about Jesus... And, and, and I don't really like the stuff of, you know, we're, we're, there's, a, there's this stuff going on. A lot of times pastors nowadays say, you know, don't use Christian language. Why not? It's in the Bible. Just talk to them. Get them to understand it. Amen. Just like you would when you're trying to explain anything. If they've never heard of it before, you've got to explain it to them. So just explain it to them. Amen. Because if you don't use that language, they're going to get in church and the preacher's going to start preaching. And they're going to be like, what? Amen? So we need to help them out. We're called to help people comprehend light. So Jesus didn't manifest to expose sin. He came to release us from sin. When you talk to the average unbeliever about church, they think we're here to expose sin, not to release them from it. That's why they don't want to, you know... Well, I go over there, you know, that's why they say things like the, the roof will cave in or lightning will strike or something silly like that. You know the answer to those things, right? 
When somebody says something like that, you say, no, God's not going to kill me to get to you. <laughs> Amen. So, let's go over to John chapter 3. So, we are, called to get, we are called to help people understand or comprehend the light so they can apprehend it or take hold of it. People need the light. They just don't know it. And you need, you know, we need to, well, we're going to talk about this in the next one. Okay, I'll just keep going. <laughs> we need to be light. We need to be available. Soul winning is wonderful. It's not always fun. It is when you get them there, though. It's wonderful when you get them there. So, John 3, 18 says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. So people that, that, that don't know Jesus, they're already condemned because they have not made that transition. They have not been born again, so they are already condemned. We're not straightening them out. We're trying to lead them to the new birth. Okay? He is condemned already because he hath not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. Verse 19, and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. This is the condemnation. Whenever we speak of the light, which is anything that is revelation concerning the Bible, people feel condemned. You need to understand that. The first thing they're going to feel is condemnation. They're not going to go, oh, whoopee. They're going to understand that they're in darkness. That's going to become a reality to them real quickly when you start talking to them. Okay? Don't worry about that because we're going to show them the way out. Is that right? And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness. You curse darkness, you're cursing something they like. They don't like that. Show them a way out. Show them why light is better than darkness. Don't worry about the darkness. Show them the light. Okay? And men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. Well, we already know that. And they know it too. If you, you, know, if you, if you can get them to admit it, they'll tell you. They know it ain't okay. But they don't want to change it. Why? Because they love it. Because that's their nature. Their nature is to love darkness. We need to show them light in such a way that they can comprehend it and go, man, I need to get out of this darkness. Amen? For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved or shown. Nobody likes to know they've done something wrong. Right? But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, and that his deeds may be made manifest that they were wrought in God. In other words, God has a way out of what they were in. So, people already feel condemned because of the light they do see. The little bit of light they see because light does what? It dispels darkness. In other words, what... And the Bible says that the deeds that we do, the deeds that we did before, that when we do those,